This is UXK. 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 I'm your host, Lee Allen Arredondo. I honestly, I don't know how to start this intro, you know, like, I guess we just start with hello. Yeah. Hello, Laura. <laughs> Hi, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we need another UX podcast? Yes, I do. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't see another UX podcast out there that's really addressing the soft skills that we need in UX to be effective. And that was that was the place where this was coming from. I wanted to I want to talk to experts in the field in different areas like around the globe because I think right it's not just about the US, it's not just about Seattle. <laughs> well, this is a pretty global community. So and and we are facing the same issues with everybody I talk to has issues or has experienced issues with, for example, how do we get a seat at the table for UX? That's a super common one. Or how how can we get more research in our process? How could we get how can we get our PMs to include us earlier? How come my clients don't understand what UX is? You know, these kind of things that we hear over and over. I agree. And I also, I believe too, that this is about interdisciplinary approaches, right? Because we, we see a lot of people working in silos. We see a lot of teams, right? Building products in silos and not necessarily uh, having a, a wider, larger, broader conversation across the business. And so I think this is a, I think as you talk about, you know, thinking globally and talking to experts in all in all different areas and fields and approaches i think that that's the that that's the the highlight well i was hoping that we could take a minute to introduce ourselves kind of in this episode 0 since you and i are amplify alliance and amplify alliance is producing this podcast so why don't you tell us a little a little bit about you, Laura, when you are introducing yourself to like a prospective client or students, kind of what's your spiel? Uh, well, I usually say that um, I'm a, a senior customer experience researcher, um, lately embracing a little bit more of the strategic side of things. And I've, I'm also an instructor. I carry both titles. And so as a professional in the field, as a an instructor in the classroom, I feel like I have this really uh, great opportunity to kind of bridge both and so bring my experience in the real world into the classroom, but also bring my teaching techniques and um, approaches into the conference room to help uh, teams and the stakeholders have better conversations and to foster uh, UX education and CX education um, at every, at every step of the way. I love that. That's our vision behind Amplify Alliance too, you know, like bringing the, the training into the teams. Well, so I'm Lee Allen Arredondo and I'm going to be the host of this UX Cake podcast and I'm a UX consultant, and I'm also a teacher and coach and co-founder of Amplify Alliance with my partner, Laura Barboza. And I've been creating software and digital products since, <laughs> I hate to say this, actually, I'm just going to say since the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> and I've worked with all kinds of companies from startups and agencies to uh, large Fortune 100s like Amazon and Microsoft, T-Mobile, and I love 
building teams and I love building human-centered design and strategic practices and helping teams build a better practice. And I mentor a lot, which was really kind of the impetus of this podcast when I realized that there were so many people who needed mentoring and there's never enough people to do the mentoring. And, um, and there's a lot of the same, um, kind of questions that are coming up again and again. So let's, let's talk about those things in a way that we could broadcast them to, to more than one person. Mm-hmm. Let's amplify it. Well said. <laughs> what are some subjects that you hear like in your mentoring and coaching that UX professionals have a hard time with? There's been themes around learning how to gain buy-in from stakeholders, from partners, from product teams. Um, I think there's also trends around interviewing and getting the job and what is it that companies are looking for, given the fact that I have experience with being an embedded researcher in the corporate world within a product team, but also working as a consultant on my own and through agencies, um, having having had vendorship status at companies like Amazon and Microsoft and even working for startups. I think that people really want to understand, I guess, the difference across all those areas or opportunities, work opportunities and learn exactly how how others are embracing UX in, in those various environments. You know, you work with a lot of students, but I it, it comes up a lot with UX pros as well, people who are already working in the field and they're looking to make a move or even transition into maybe something a little bit different. Maybe they've been doing a lot of mobile stuff and they are interested in getting into AR or VR mm -hmm. or voice, you know, emerging technologies, I guess. And, you know, that, that's something that I, I actually would like to do kind of a series around because it, it's coming up so often now. The emerging technologies piece is happening so much faster than schools can actually prepare people for. And, and then of course the, these companies want, to find experienced UX pros. Mm -hmm. And there hasn't really been enough time for that many people to have deep knowledge about voice design and research or AR design and research. So people are looking to transition into these areas and the companies need them. They do. Those are some, some conversations that would be, that we'll be having. Actually, I'm, I've got, a couple of them lined up already. So I'm excited. That's great. You know, something else that I feel uh, comes up quite often, at least for me on the research side of things is um, having the ability or the opportunity to do more generative work rather than continuing to do the usability testing, right? On the evaluative uh, tactical side of the house, right? So getting more strategic on the research side. That's right. That's right. And, you know, it's, I see the value of uh, continuing to do usability testing, say to you know, open, open stakeholder eyes, or maybe uh, get them, get them started, right, with uh, a technique so powerful as usability testing, right, to, to fully understand how customers think, and maybe to embrace empathy a little bit more. But there's so much more, right, to the to UX, to UX research, than, than just what happens at the design phase. I mean, the upfront strategic work uh, could be so much more enlightening and um, could give organizations such, a, such an ability to, to do the right things rather than just do things right. Yeah. And, you know, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about how we talk about our PMs or business or devs not buying in, you know, to the strategic research. But, you know, honestly, I've seen quite frequently where designers themselves are not doing research. They aren't necessarily 
um, well versed in doing the research, and so they're not actually pushing for it. So I think there's some education in that area that could be happening as well. There's definitely more designers now. I've seen them in my research classes. There's a lot of designers who are realizing they need they need a little bit more understanding of, of research, what it can do and what types of research there are. So mm -hmm. you know, another another topic that I definitely have a lot of talks around or conversations around uh vulnerability in general, right? In our in our careers. What do you mean? I guess it's uh, you know, growth in and of itself puts us in a place where we might be second guessing or questioning whether we're ready to take that next step. Uh, there are times when we're embracing areas that we may not necessarily be super well versed in. And so we might feel a sense of uh, imposter, imposter syndrome. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's so common, isn't it? Yes. And so feeling that that bit of imposter syndrome when we're brought in as quote unquote experts, yet we're still trying to fully wrap our heads around a new technique or a new position or a new role within a team or um, is, is something that I, that I discuss a lot with a lot of different seasoned professionals in our field. I, I agree. I like, uh, you know, I think we need to talk about the times when we have to do things that feel uncomfortable in order to grow. And if you're not ever feeling uncomfortable, I think that means you're probably not growing. And um, it doesn't have to be in your career is the thing, right? Like for some people, they're doing those things outside of their career, like um, when I signed up for a triathlon a couple years ago and, <laughs> and I just, you know, I was a little bit bored at, with my work. <laughs> so I, I funneled that into something else, but it was new and, and probably scary, right? To, yeah, yeah. To jump in that direction. Yeah. And that, those things, those opportunities do come up in our careers. And I think sometimes people especially women. I, this happens for men too, but women in particular, I believe the research has shown that, that women kind of have a lack of confidence in their ability to do something that they haven't done before, right? It feels maybe a little scary or uncomfortable, but that might be an indication that that is the right thing to do because, you know, because you'll grow. Mm -hmm. That's true. All right, so there's another subject for another episode. Growth and vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do have a bunch of really interesting subjects teed up besides, let's see, what's coming up? We've got mentoring, being a mentor, getting executive buy-in for UX, uh, cross-functional team collaboration. Those are the first three episodes. And then teed up are lots of really interesting subjects around transitioning within UX, working with executives, challenges for UX pros and startups, working with PMs and getting PMs to help UX efforts. So yeah, actually lots of good stuff coming up, but I think we should probably wrap it up for now. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about Amplify Alliance. Okay, sure. Uh, so for, for Amplify, the intention is to talk to customers, right? Our customers, which would be either corporations, maybe students, maybe just individuals in the field about uh, design thinking strategies and maybe how to incorporate more design thinking in their organizations and maybe even in their own lives, right? As, as uh, individual professionals. So we offer workshops, we offer training, we offer mentorships and coaching opportunities so that we can, once again, help, help the field grow, help uh, companies and organizations grow as well, right, by expanding um, their existing methods and techniques for building sound products and services that, that are delightful for the customer. 
Awesome. Sometimes the uh, sometimes the the expertise and the techniques are there. We just need to figure out how to better share them. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, Laura. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to launching this podcast. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Well, I'm not an expert podcaster. <laughs> I'm a complete newbie. That's all right. We aren't expert podcasters, but we're expert UX, so that's what we're bringing to the table. (laughs) And that's what matters. Amplify that, Lee. (laughs) That's our UX cake (laughs) that we're serving up, slice by slice. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Well, that's it for now. Subscribe to UX Cake on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss even a bite. If you have suggestions for topics you'd like us to explore, you can give us comments and feedback on our UX Cake Facebook page or go to our website at uxcake.co. And of course, thank you for listening.